Narrative Live. Excited to be joined today by Stephen Hoffenberg, uh, who's joining us from Connecticut, a man who's very familiar to followers of the Jeffrey Epstein story, and a man who's also been working very hard to get the victims their money back. Uh, it's looking like the victims may ultimately not get the restitution and maybe not even the justice that they were hoping to get. Zev, it's a tragedy for the rape victims. This estate now is in turmoil. And the man running the estate is the former co-conspirator of Jeffrey Epstein, mm. which is shocking, Darren Indyke. He's been served with papers by the Virgin Islands Attorney General to remove him from the estate, and the Virgin Island Attorney General has taken a lean out in the estate courthouse against all the assets. Let's explain this to viewers here, because the the Virgin Isles has, uh, they believe, a claim over the estate. They want 80 to $85 million from the estate by selling uh, the two islands, the private islands that Jeffrey Epstein owned there. Denise George became Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands just months before Epstein's death by suicide last year. Her office is now suing Epstein's estate. Why pursue these sort of charges now? Well, all I'll have to say is why not now? Why do they have a claim? Why do they say they have a claim? If crimes were committed mm -hmm. at the real estate sites, that's illegal and it makes the real estate site subject to forfeiture. It doesn't go to victims. It doesn't go to, to no, anybody it else. Goes, it goes to the state. It goes to, it goes to the Virgin Islands. I'm sorry, it doesn't go to the estate. And that's just if, been, that's law if, everywhere, right? That's not, that's not unusual to the Virgin Islands. What might be unusual to the Virgin Islands is that Jeffrey Epstein seems to have had such a hold over their justice system for so long. Well, keep in mind that it could change. If the Southern District of New York decides to go into the case because of the crimes committed in the estate mm -hmm. and outside the estate, the conversion of the securities and the assets into cash mm -hmm. at deep discounts, they now are reporting $248 million in actual cash on hand after converting their securities. Now, what needs to be done is the Southern District of New York, which is the United States of America Justice Department, who arrested Epstein, they have to enter the case on behalf of America and take it over, which they have an opportunity to do at some time to decide. It should be noted here, of course, the the U.S. Virgin Islands are part of the United States, but because they're they're not a, a full a full state, they only they they choose an attorney general and they do that in consultation with the Department of Justice and the attorney general in the United States. But it's not the same kind of direct connection as the SDNY has or the other uh, different branches or districts of the Justice Department has. So it's, it, they do have a, a justice system over there and it seems to operate well for them. But it doesn't seem to be the exact same system that we have here. And by that, I mean, there seems to be a lot of corruption. I mean, it's really hard to avoid the fact that Jeffrey Epstein, still until this day, according to the filings, I know some people believe she's gone, but still until this day, has his office manager for one of his big corporations where most of the money has been held. Uh, her name is Cecilia de Jong, and she is the wife of the former governor of the U.S. Virgin Isles, who just two years ago was arrested for corruption, or at least charged with corruption. Um, well, maybe it was more than two years ago, it was 2015. That you can sort of, I mean, not, there might not be corruption there, but there might be corruption there, of course, Steve, because you know how these things work. You've got the wife of the governor working for you on a $250 million company called Southern Trust. You're not gonna go out of your way to investigate what crimes uh, he might be committing. It's a tragedy. Mm -hmm. What you're describing is, uh, very difficult to understand for the public to realize how serious this is to the rape victims. Mm. This is a, a wholly independent government, mm. the Virgin Islands, and it's not under the responsibility of the United States of America unless the United States of America 
decide it should take authority, right. which they can do at any given time. They can I, I know they can. I know they can. And of course, the SDNY has been out there saying very publicly that they intend to still, you know, uh, get evidence from Prince Andrew. They intend to still indict other co-conspirators. But let me assure you that this case will continue on against anyone who was complicit with Epstein. Any co-conspirators should not rest easy. The victims deserve justice, and they will get it. But it has been a while, and they've certainly had a lot of opportunity to do those things, and they haven't done it. Now, you and I have maybe a different take on why they haven't done it, but I personally believe they have not been able to do anything because, as we broke first on narrative, uh, you know, Jeffrey and Ghislaine were operating for the Israeli military intelligence. And in, in that particular world, you know, you don't normally take espionage cases and throw them into the, into the criminal justice system because it exposes too many secrets. Add on top of that a, a royal family connection like uh, Prince Andrew, and now you've got a real global scandal on your hands. They can't put Prince Andrew on the stand discussing espionage. It's just not going to happen. So the SDNY, in my, my mind, is left a bit immobilized by the realities of this particular case. And even if their intentions are, are noble, which some would say maybe they're not, but even if they are noble, it would be hard to prosecute a case like this to go to court because how do you ask about all these uh, top secret covert spy operations? You cannot go to court. Right. You're, you're handcuffed. Mm -hmm. The Southern District of New York, which is the federal government, are compromised because of the spying that they honestly didn't know about. Because mm -hmm. that was top secret. And when Epstein was arrested, the degree of the spying was not on the surface. The Jeffrey Epstein mystery story has a lot of... Uh, tentacles and legs. It's an amazing story. Unbelievable. That takes, that takes place over 30 years mm -hmm. with awful lot of people involved. Mm -hmm. And Jeffrey Epstein left his Wall Street employer, Bear Stearns, because he had no option. They terminated his ability to do securities at Bear Stearns because of a violation of the securities rules where he mm -hmm. lost his license. Thereafter, he was able to find a client overseas, a man named Douglas Lease, the Lease Companies, that had a group of companies that retained Jeffrey Epstein as an investment banker. Mm. Now, the Lease Companies and the Douglas Lease senior person in their company, he was a spy. He was working as a contractor, an independent person, assisting MI6. That was Epstein's introduction into spying through Douglas Lease and Anon Khashoggi and Robert Maxwell. That's how Jeffrey Epstein first had the opportunity to realize what spying was all about. Jeffrey Epstein didn't know anything about spying. Nothing. One of the first people who told me that maybe they were working for the Israelis uh, was you. you. Maybe you weren't intending to say it, but you sort of told me that. I was like, the Israelis, how could they be possibly working for the Israelis? The Israelis are meant to be a, a, good, a good country. They don't do bad things. I did some further investigation, and that's why Narrative was able to first break uh, the story that, uh, that uh, Jeffrey and Ghislaine were spies uh, for Israel. Because I went to Ari ben Menashe in in Montreal, who was Maxwell's spy handler. I mean, if anyone was going to know if these guys are working for the spies, Ari ben Menashe was going to be that guy. Would you say she was uh, an, an agent as well? Was she uh, yes, someone yes. working for oh, Israeli oh. intelligence? Oh, definitely. Military intelligence as well? Yes, yes. And um, to, when, when that happens, because I have no idea how that world works, so I'm learning a little it's bit. It's happened by accident. Do, do, do you get orders and you have to do certain things, no, or is no, it more no, like... No, a, no, no. We get projects. We projects. These guys were seen as agents. Mm -hmm. They weren't co really competent to do very much. Uh, and so um, 
they found a niche for themselves, black wheeling mm -hmm. American and other uh, political figures. For the Israelis? For... Yeah. So it's... Take me back to this 1980s because Ari ben Menashe says that's when Ghislaine was smitten by Jeffrey Epstein and Robert Maxwell brings her in uh, brings her in and then him in, Jeffrey Epstein in, to introduce him to Ari ben Menashe and says, we want this guy to work for us doing Iran-Contra. Can you confirm any of those details? I can help you understand the timeline and who participated with Jeffrey Epstein and how he became a spy and what he did when he became a spy. I can help you in all those areas because I was there. You were there? I did. Did he I tell you? These did he tell you I'm a spy? Did he go and say I'm working yes, for the Israelis? Yes. He told me that he was a spy. He was fully aware that I was asked to join to be a spy and that I rejected the request. So Douglas I, Lee's asked you to, to join them and be a spy. And you said, no, I don't want to have anything to do with that. I rejected the request of the spying. Okay. Jeffrey Epstein accepted the request of the spying, and he further cemented his opportunity in espionage when he met Jerome Maxwell and entered into a serious relationship with her mm -hmm. as a lady-man relationship that was mm -hmm. a very strong bond between them, a very powerful and dynamic work relationship between the two of them, and they've admitted to the public that they took over Robert Maxwell's spying records, operations, mm -hmm. and moved that to Florida, to Jeffrey Epstein's house. That's been admitted. That's a fact. It's so stunning because, you know, Robert Maxwell was a very significant figure in the 20th century. I mean, you might argue that he's one of the biggest because he helped end the Soviet Union. Um, and, you know, you can't think of a bigger change to have happened geopolitically than that particular change. So what you're saying is that even after his death, Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein continued uh, to do the things that he uh, was working on, to do some of the work he was working on? Or did they just keep the money? They did work, actual mm. work, in gaining information of importance and relaying and transferring that information to the country that they were assisting in the spy. Yes, they did that regularly. And they also installed in the homes of Jeffrey Epstein filming and audio systems by the spy agency in order to record rapes of little girls to be used for blackmail. And in fact, you know, that has all been proven now in many, many ways. In the court documents we've seen just recently in the last few days, the uh, Florida, um, uh, I guess the, the, the prosecutor's office, they released a whole lot of documents and new video showing what it looked like inside the Palm Beach home of Jeffrey Epstein. And clearly that was a place that was used for um, you know, stuff that uh, that is not the kind of thing that would go on in every in every type of house. This was a, a blackmail operation with videos and cameras uh, designed to entrap the powerful, designed to entrap politicians, mostly Americans, but of all different countries, in order to blackmail them. And not just to blackmail them for, will you do me a favor by voting this way or that way in the next, uh, or will you look the other way over that crime? They were blackmailing them is my understanding for information, top secret information uh, that these politicians would have gotten as part of their jobs. Could be nuclear secrets, could be uh, Pentagon secrets, you name it. They were using that blackmail tape to get those top secret American files. They did very effectively what you just described. Mm -hmm. They provided underage girls for sexual illegal acts Mm -hmm. to the rich and famous, and that was recorded on video and audio of the rich and famous. And Prince Andrew is right. going through a terrible time, right. horrible time, and he has no way to turn. He is stuck, Prince Andrew. 
with this horrible tragedy of Jeffrey Epstein that won't let him have his normal responsibilities any longer. All that is correct. because of this case. All because of this mysterious case. And the public doesn't understand. It's it's very hard for the public to understand because you know as I found out the the mainstream media which I, I never like to refer to them as that because I, I, I you know I enjoy employment from them every once in a while but I am surprised that no one in the media has been willing to step out and say what we all know is true because it's factually now being proven by so many that uh, Epstein and Ghislaine were working for not only the Israelis probably the Israelis plus a bunch of other uh, intelligence agencies but directly. They were getting orders from the Israeli military intelligence, sometimes on behalf of the CIA, sometimes on behalf of others, maybe the MI6. But that these were not just uh, as the you know this was not just a, a case of a uh, of a of a financial billionaire or a, uh, whatever he could describe himself as his financial advisor. He was doing this on behalf of of the spies. Yes, that was his job that he mm. took, and that's what helped him avoid justice. In America, right. in America for the court system. The spying was the vehicle that got him out of the penalty box repeatedly in America, which is a, a very sad story. Very it is a sad story because really what we're saying is America, through the CIA and the Israelis, um, made alliances with Saudi Arabia, with the UAE, yeah, which is normal. This is what happens when you're having a Cold War. You establish alliances between different countries and you trust your allies. Now, I think what uh, has happened in the last few years is maybe there's been a little bit of more friction now between the, uh, between the American intelligence community and uh, the Israeli intelligence community because of Jeffrey Epstein, because maybe they'd gone too far. Maybe, you know, with, with Epstein and some of the others, maybe, maybe some of the moves that Donald Trump has made politically, maybe they went too far. And that's how Jeffrey Epstein ultimately lost his protection and landed up in, 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 in the courts. Well, I haven't seen a separation of the relationship between Israel and America that's still the number one ally in the Middle East. And Correct. nobody has seen a separation or any change. Now, they may have gone too far, which is what you're quoting in, that's, That's my assessment, yeah. yeah. That's evident. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't change the greater good for the two nations to be close to each other. Oh, no, absolutely okay. not. Yeah, I think you're absolutely correct. I think you're 100% correct. You know, Jonathan Pollard is another example of when the Israelis maybe went a little too far. Uh, he went to jail because they went too far. Uh, but it didn't change the relationship on a, on a macro scale. You know, Israel remained a bigger ally. Um, and, it, you know, neither will Jeffrey Epstein. It just seems so interesting that because of the way this unfolded, you know, Jonathan Pollard went through the court system, spent a lot of time in jail and was arrested for espionage. But Jeffrey Epstein never got that, got that chance. Well, Jeffrey Epstein had a different ranking than Jonathan Pollard. You could not compare the two jobs. Right. Epstein was a billionaire financier with access to the top people in America. Mm -hmm. He had enormous access to the top people in America, the top prince in the UK. Prince Andrew was one of his closest associates. Mm -hmm. He called him his trophy, Super Bowl trophy that he was able to establish. And he had vast contacts mm -hmm. at the top of Israel, which mm -hmm. is a small country that is trying to only protect itself. Israel is a tiny country in a very difficult location in the world mm -hmm. with enemies on every border is very worried about what happens in America. And information is critical to the Israeli intelligence organizations. And Epstein had the ability to gather information mm. about the American philosophy and policy toward Israel. And that was his calling. And that's what he performed effectively. Very, very effectively. effectively.
Support Narrative's independent journalism at patreon.com forward slash narrative. And check out our podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe and download.